Picture San Francisco in the early 20th century. Ferries shuttle people across a windy strait. Fog rolls in like a curtain, and engineers insist no bridge can survive the tides, gales, and earthquakes of the Golden Gate. The region is growing, but without a direct road link to Marin, it is bottlenecked by the bay. Voters back a bold plan anyway, approving bonds during the Great Depression to finance a suspension bridge that many call impossible. Chief Engineer Joseph Strauss assembles a dream team. Designer Leon Moiseif refines the graceful suspension scheme. Structural analyst Charles Ellis runs the math that makes the long span feasible. And architect Irving Morrow gives the bridge its Art Deco lines and its now famous international orange paint that pops through the fog and complements sea and hills. Work begins in January 1933, and the site fights back immediately. Crews anchor foundations in cold, fast water while winter storms lash the strait. Divers blast bedrock far below the surface. Steel rises into two 746-foot towers. Then cable spinners pull thousands of thin wires into two main cables with a combined length of tens of thousands of miles. Strauss pushes safety in an era when it was often an afterthought. Hard hats are required, and a giant safety net slung under the roadway saves 19 men who call themselves the Halfway to Hell Club. Even with precautions, the job is dangerous, and 11 workers lose their lives. By spring 1937, the 4,200-foot mainspan is complete ahead of schedule and under budget. On May 27th, Pedestrian Day, about 200,000 people pay a quarter to stroll the new bridge from end to end. The next day, President Franklin Roosevelt touches a telegraph key in Washington to open it to cars, and San Francisco throws a week-long party for its newest landmark. The bridge quickly becomes a stage for history. During wartime, it is the gateway to the Pacific. On the 50th anniversary in 1987, so many people crowd the roadway that the bridge's gentle arch briefly flattens under the load, a startling sight that engineers later confirm never threatened its safety. Two years later, the Loma Prieta earthquake rattles the Bay Area. While other structures suffer serious damage, the Golden Gate Bridge stands firm and even handles a record surge of traffic while detours are in place. Its story is not just firsts and festivals, it is resilience in the face of real tests. Keeping a giant of steel alive beside salty water takes constant work. The orange paint is not just for looks, it seals steel against rust, and painting never truly ends. By the time crews finish one end of the bridge, the other end is ready again, Iron workers replace worn steel, swap old rivets for modern fasteners, and inspect thousands of parts high above the water. Engineers have replaced every vertical suspender cable one by one, installed bracing to steady the deck in wind, and carried out major seismic retrofits so the bridge can ride out future quakes. The original heavy roadway has been updated with lighter steel panels to reduce weight. On any given day, the span carries well over 100,000 vehicles, yet it remains welcoming to people on foot and on bikes. Visitors can walk the sidewalks, feel the thrum of the cables, and hear the low moan of foghorns when the mist returns. A visitor area on the San Francisco side shares the bridge's history and design, and millions come each year to see the towers glow at sunrise and disappear into evening fog. From an audacious vote in hard times to a ribbon of steel that frames one of the world's great views, the Golden Gate Bridge is both machine and symbol. It solved a real problem by linking communities on opposite shores, and it did so with beauty that turned practical engineering into art. Its story is a lesson in teamwork, careful calculation, and stubborn optimism and it continues today each time a painter dips a brush 
a traveler steps onto the sidewalk, or a student looks up and realizes that the bridge everyone said could not be built is still doing its job.